The next and a very important topic is trigger helper class design pattern. Let me tell you what exactly this is. Uh, first of all, let's understand what exactly a design pattern is. Design pattern is basically a pattern in which you need to design your code or you need to structure your code so that we are able to achieve some benefits out of it and uh, we are able to eliminate some problems that uh, writing a writing code in a normal fashion would bring uh, to us, right? So what that means is, like, let's say, we all know how to drive a car, right? But uh, there is a particular way of driving a car uh, which ensures that you're going to be safe and also the other people who are also driving the car uh, in the same lane or onto the same road will also be safe. Uh, so these design patterns are nothing but uh, the structures and the defined best practices uh, which help a developer write the code in the best manner. So that's all what a design pattern basically means. Uh, when it comes to Apex triggers, we've got trigger helper class design pattern and let me tell you what that uh, basically means, right? So trigger helper class, uh, oh, trigger helper class design pattern uh, basically means this. So you have got an, an object, right? Let's say this is an object and you've got multiple triggers onto it. Trigger one, trigger two, trigger three, trigger four, trigger five, and so on. And all of them have different, different trigger events and some of them have the same trigger event as well. So there is a big problem that we have or that we face uh, while writing down the trigger. And that is that whenever we, uh, like whenever the data, uh, the execution of the trigger gets initiated, the order of execution of the triggers is not uh, set or cannot be predicted. That's a big problem when it comes to triggers. And also, uh, like let's say there are two to three developers working onto the same org or even more than that. And all of them, what they're doing is whenever they face a particular problem and they think that it will get solved with the help of a particular trigger, they go uh, into the developer org. Uh, yeah, they go into the developer org and just create another trigger onto that particular object by just thinking that there is no, uh, like, no, no trigger which is already created onto that uh, particular object with that same trigger event, right? So it creates a lot of ambiguity. There are a lot of different different triggers which gets created into a particular org, which uh, the developers are not aware of uh, while creating a trigger inside it, uh, inside a particular org. So in this case, Salesforce recommends uh, like the developers to use trigger helper class design pattern. On, and what this helper class design pattern says is that you need to write down all of the logic inside a helper class and you should only create a single trigger onto a particular object, right? And now, whatever new functionality you want to add in, you should just go and create another method inside this helper class and just call it inside the trigger which you have created onto that particular object. I know it might sound a little uh, different uh, way of creating or writing down the code, like why do we need to actually help create a helper class or what exactly a helper class is. So let me take an example in order to explain it to you in an easier way. So let's say that there is an object called as account. And inside account, uh, there are like multiple triggers that you want to create. So what we are saying is that you should only create a single, a single trigger on account object. There should not be more than one trigger onto the account object. And this trigger should have all the trigger events and everything. And inside it, for different, different uh, trigger events, you should call different, different methods from the helper class. And now let me tell you what this helper class is. This helper class is nothing but just an apex class, which has got different, different static methods uh, with the help of which you actually execute the logic, uh, which you want to perform onto the, uh, perform into the trigger. So whenever you get a particular, uh, like let's say you, you are inserting new records. So on account, it will go to the same trigger because it has got all the trigger events. And now in this trigger, it will go into the before insert block, which we can actually, uh, uh, yeah, which we can actually define with the help of context variables, which we just understood, like the trigger dot is before a trigger dot is, in, is insert. 
and all what we will we'll be doing is will be calling a method from this apex class inside this particular trigger to execute the logic so the trigger is nothing but a place where you can call different different methods to execute the logic and this helper class is nothing but a class which which contains all the uh, yeah which contains all the what should i say uh, which contains all the logical part which you want to uh, which you want to be executed uh, inside the triggers but it is kept in, in at, at a set, so separate place why two reasons number one will be able to uh, control the execution order or the order of execution for different different events inside the same trigger as well uh, itself how because uh, now we are just calling the methods now there are no different different triggers which uh, which which might have different execution time or uh, one can get executed before the other one so it, it's it's not any more a problem because we only have single trigger and all the logical part stays into the helper class and we just call that from there so that's the first uh, achievement that we get while using this trigger helper helper class design pattern uh, that we can actually control the order of execution in, uh, in into the same trigger event like in before insert if you want uh, method one to get executed first and method two to uh, get executed later or method two to get executed first or method one to get executed later we can uh, change the order and we can set the order inside the trigger itself that, so that's one thing uh, with the help which we are able to achieve with the help of trigger helper class design pattern and uh, the next thing that we'll be able to achieve with the help of trigger helper class design pattern is reusability of the code right so what that means is that inside a trigger helper class you have written down a logic which you can use for before insert as well that same logic can be used for before update as well that same logic can be used for some other trigger event as well or somewhere else as well if you want to use it so it it like it, it helps you uh, reuse the code wherever you want to and it helps you set the order uh, of the ex order of execution in a correct way uh, into the same trigger so these are the major reasons because of which we should always and always write down uh, the triggers in an uh, with the, like uh, using the trigger helper class design pattern that basically means you, sh you should only have only a single like you should have only a single uh, trigger onto a particular object and you should have a helper class which contains all the logical all the logics uh, which you want to execute onto the records which are getting inserted updated deleted or whatever and then you, you should just use it over there so that's pretty much it let's go into our org and see how i have already created a helper class design pattern example to make you understand it so this is the trigger apex trigger 10 on account right and i've got all the trigger events uh, whichever i wanted to use over here and over here what i've done is i've created the trigger dot is before is update is delete so this is nothing but the uh, blocks that i created earlier with the help of context variables right so whatever uh, code i want i want to be executed for before insert trigger i'll just uh, like i mean call the methods over here and these methods are static methods account trigger helper dot first method and i'm just passing the reference to the list over there let's go to account trigger helper over here and see what exactly this contains so account trigger helper so it's just a normal class public class account trigger helper that's what the name is this is the naming convention you it, it's not compulsory for you to write down uh, like helper or some acc trigger helper you can just name it whatever you want to but uh, it's better if you use the naming conventions and the nomenclature uh, okay so in this what i've got is i've got two different methods both of them are public static uh, so that i'll be able to call it from the trigger as well and uh, yeah the first method uh, like accepts the list of account which is exactly what we are passing from here with the help of trigger dot new and this says system trigger calling from method one system records are and then it will just system dot debug a so whatever logic you want to write down just write it down over here and just call the method over there that's all what you need to do similarly for second method what i've done is this the logic is same but the method is different so whatever log logic you want to write down just write it down over here in the helper class inside the public static method and just call it from here so over here uh, i can yeah i mean whatever logic you want to write you wanted to write down for trigger one just write it down over here whatever logic you wanted to write down for trigger two just write it down over here and just call it in this fashion so that the order of execution is defined so if you want the second method to get get executed first just 
write it down over here now the second method will get executed first uh, and the first method will get executed later on but if you want to uh, yeah i mean whichever way you want to uh, set the order of execution you can just do it in here so we have achieved both the things uh, the order of execution as well as uh, the reusability of the code. So if I want to use the same code in uh, before update as well, what I, all what I'll do is I'll just call the method in here as well. Account trigger helper dot first method. That's it. So I'll be able to reuse the same code in the before update trigger as well. And that way it will be easier for me. So now imagine if this is what we have written down already and there's a new developer who is coming in and who also wants to write down a trigger. Uh, so now what that particular uh, developer will do is he or she will create a new public static method let's say public static void third method and inside this third method let's just write down that's all and if I just want to execute it in here all what I need to do is just write down acc trigger helper dot third method and that's it that's how easy it is so and and also he or she will be able to see all the logics in the same uh, class uh, with the help of which they'll be able to figure out uh, the right order of execution for different different triggers that you want to create onto the same object i hope that you're able to understand this <laughs>